This is the 2025 Honda CRV LX. Does the base trim level have enough features? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm at Holmes Honda to give you the particulars on this LX, the base trim level for the CRV, and you can make a determination on what you think about whether or not it has enough features. Obviously, that's going to mean a lower price. There is a good thing. If you want to know more about this model, check out the link in the description of the video. The exterior color is crystal black. You will also find a black interior. Let's see what else you get on this trim level. LED headlights and LED daytime running lights. You're going to find that flickering effect is only happening through the lens of my camera. It's not really happening. And to help improve aerodynamics, right here you're going to have the active air curtains that allow air to pass through the front end. That's a good thing. Help you out with those MPGs. And this model will come in two-wheel drive or front-wheel drive, but all-wheel drive is available. And let's talk about our tire and wheel size. Since I mentioned whether it's front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, we're looking at 245 on our width. The sidewall is a 65 series wrapped around the 17-inch wheels. And the advantage to those 17-inch wheels is better ride quality because you have more sidewall built into the tire, which means it's going to do a better job of absorbing the bumps down the road. Here is the remote. The only thing missing here is remote start. And what about your safety features? Honda Sensing is here. That's going to be on all trim levels, a standard thing. Adaptive cruise control road departure mitigation braking, collision mitigation, traffic jam assist, lane keeping assist, it's all here. That's good news. And one thing you won't find on any trim level of the CRV is going to be power folding side view mirrors. They're all manually folding, but not a big deal. Just so you know what's there. Turn signal indicators built in. In this case, you have power adjustable side view mirrors, but you don't have heated side view mirrors or blind spot monitoring. And we'll work our way here to the rear. We finish things off with the LED taillights and obviously all of your logos and everything here. You also won't find exhaust coming out from the bumper area. Not necessarily a big deal, still a nice clean look. That's a good thing. Your rear window wiper is here to help out when you need to clean off that rear window or run it in the rain. And you'll also find what Honda calls a tailgate spoiler. That's what this is. We often call it a rear roof spoiler, but Honda says it's a tailgate spoiler. So that's what we'll go with. Under the hood is going to be the 1.5 liter direct injection turbocharged four cylinder. It makes 190 horsepower and 179 pounds feet of torque. It is mated to a CVT. Your MPGs come in at 28 city, 34 highway, 30 combined, and 3.3 gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. You do have a lockable gas door, so when you lock the interior, as I'll show you real fast, just for demonstration purposes, the gas door also locks. Just a little peace of mind for you there, and if you're curious, the gas tank on this model is 14 gallons in size. Few people are likely to tow with their CRV, but you can tow up to 1,500 pounds. And here on the LX trim level, you don't have a power tailgate, but it is dampened, has the assist built into it. You open it just a little bit, that dampening takes over and opens it the rest of the way for you. We're looking at some cargo lighting back here, the bag holder right there. We're going to have one on each side in addition to a 12 volt power outlet. And something that is a big advantage here. For those of you who are interested in a spare tire, there you go. You will not find that on the CRV hybrid models. And your cargo capacity has some interesting information going with it 36.6 to 39.3 to 76.5 cubic feet when you maximize everything. Those lower numbers come because you can actually change the position of the floor right here, as you can see. Just a nice little convenience to give you a little bit of added space. You will find some space behind the fender wells in addition to the space here in the center. And let's see what your rear seat passengers are going to find. Plenty of room with the armrest. And I like the fact that this front area right here is flat. It doesn't have an angle to it. That helps. Bottle holder here or door bin, whichever you want to use it as. A little bit of space behind. So technically it could be used as a bottle holder and a door bin at the same time. And we do have cloth seating. Now, one thing I do want to show here, as you can see, 
that the seats are reclined. Both sides do recline back here. In case you were curious about that, there's actually multiple settings for these seats as far as different positioning for the seat backs. Now you won't find seat pockets on the rear of either seat, but one thing that is a win for a lot of people, they're gonna be happy with this, is the fact that you do have air conditioning vents on the rear of the center console. No USB options in the back, but consider the lower trim level here. I don't think that's a big deal. We'll also have the fold down armrest right here. Always my favorite thing to see when it comes to a center armrest like this for the back seat is the positioning of the cup holders right here. The good thing about that is that there can be one or two cups in here and still use this as an armrest because they're not in the conventional position right here. This model does not come with a sunroof, but for me personally, that's not a big deal. How important is a sunroof to you? And how about the sticker price? $31,450. Aren't you glad you were patient enough to make it to this point in the video? So here's what we're going to have. Obviously a lot of space for storage. You will find the glove box right here and the door bins, nothing unusual, larger on the front doors than they are on the rear doors and a little more space with the armrest. That's always a good thing. Now you will find a manually adjustable seat for the passenger and the driver here. They are not heated and definitely not ventilated, but that's what you have. So what else do we have here? All your typical controls here for controlling the position of your windows, opening and closing. You have one touch down for the driver's side and one touch up, but that's going to be it. Other than that, you're going to have to hold the buttons down to raise and lower the windows. Not a big deal, but that is what's here. And when we go here, I'm gonna push the home button right there and then use this button or scroll wheel right here. I can scroll through a lot of different information and see different things going on with the vehicle, settings, all kinds of stuff, pretty easy to deal with. Not gonna spend too much time on that, but that is what is there. Digital instrument, design or cluster so easy to deal with pretty easy to set up whatever you want to on the left hand side over there if you so desire to make any changes everything right here with your steering wheel mounted controls for adaptive cruise control we talked about that is one of the features that you have here and then there's everything else that you have a little bit closer and longer look for those who might want that you will also find the controls for your lighting, exterior lighting, your headlights and your taillights right there. You can set that to auto if you want to. And you can also use your turn signal indicators. That comes down to if you want to as well, apparently, because so many people don't. And right here are the controls for the front and rear window wipers. Pretty easy to deal with. And this is a tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. You can adjust that. There is a lever right here that you can drop to adjust that, make sure you put that back in place before you take off down the road. Now here is the seven inch touchscreen. Again, that flickering effect, not really happening. It has to do with my camera, so don't let that fool you and make you think that there's a defect here. The one thing, in fact, a couple of things here, is that you will have to tether your phone to pair it, but you still can. Think about the trim level here and the price point. It's just what's here and what's not here. For some people, that's probably going to work. I know a lot of people out there don't want too much technology. And you can go into your settings again here for your screen and change things there. We just pushed menu right there. And then we can go back with the button right here, connect. If you need to connect with your phone, we've already got that connected. So no big deal there. We'll go back and there's your media depending on what you're using. You can set things up there and radio, phone obviously, and you can go back and forth between your stations here. Or you can use the volume control here and right here on the right hand side, you can use that kind of an old school sort of thing where you can use the knob to dial back and forth between stations. Single zone climate control. Again, an interior this size, I don't think you need more than that. Not a big deal, but it's here. I think the most important thing where climate is, con it climate control is concerned, according to what a lot of you tell me, has to do with whether or not you have rear air conditioning vents. And you do here. There's your USB option and a 12 volt power outlet. There is no wireless charging pad here just to show you what's underneath. Just a little bit of storage right there. You can put your phone there as I have just to demonstrate what is here. And how about driving mode? You do have multiple driving modes. It's your drive mode selector right there. Let's see what comes up on our screen. We have normal. We have econ. 
snow and you might notice that there doesn't seem to be a sport mode well there is a sport mode you just go into sport with the shifter so you have drive right there you have the s for sport the l for low if you're wondering what that l means what that does is keeps the vehicle in low gear but still gives you all the horsepower and torque for low traction situations and you also have your multi-view rear view camera no matter the trim level this is what you're going to have personally i would like to see honda add on maybe higher trim levels is where they would do it but wherever they would multiple camera views like you can have on the pilot on the elite and the trail sport trim levels i think that would be a good thing tell me what your thoughts are and you can turn the auto stop start feature or idle stop off or on, whichever you wish to do right there. We have the power parking brake here, brake hold mode. When you come to a complete stop with that activated, then the brakes stay engaged until you push the gas pedal again. Cup holders and a nice large lid for the center console. Personally, I'd like to see that be maybe a little bit higher, but for some people that might work. You can adjust the height of the seat to compensate for that so that's a good thing and plenty of space within the center console for storage and we'll take a quick look here at our upper console we will find a sunglass holder or whatever kind of glasses or whatever you want to put in there and you can see what else is here in addition to those features obviously your reading lights or map lights there as well all right here we go on our test drive and for those who are wondering is there enough power it seems to be enough for me i'm not expecting anything record shattering as far as any zero to 60 times or anything like that goes so 190 horsepower here with the crv seems to be enough seems to get down the road with no problems i haven't had any trouble getting up to speed or going around slower moving vehicles that are driving under the speed limit such as what we have here in the right hand lane and a very comfortable driving experience. The ride quality is good. That's always a plus. Now, the one thing I would like to know, it's just impossible to know for sure, is how comfortable these seats are going to be long term. But since I only have a few minutes for a test drive, there's just not much I can give you on feedback where that kind of thing is concerned. For those who are saying, Tom, I really need a brand new vehicle, but I'm just not crazy about having all that technology that so many of these vehicles have well this is a good option for you so there is technology here but not an overwhelming amount that's always a good thing for those who maybe don't want that kind of thing one thing i did forget to mention earlier in the video when i was talking about pairing your smartphone is the fact that you do have apple carplay and android auto integration here so that's something else that's a good thing that helps out for those who want to use such a thing. So basically what that is, if you're not familiar with it, is the phone or the screen will mirror your phone. So that's always going to be useful. And you can pair everything as you need to, set things up however you want to. Pretty easy to deal with. It's very self-explanatory because the screen gives you all the instructions to walk you through it. It's no big deal. You do have to tether your phone, as I told you earlier, so it's not paired wirelessly but at least you know what's going on where that's concerned. And as far as seeing goes, no problem. Easy to see out of. You don't have blind spot monitoring in the side view mirrors as you do on higher trim levels, but I don't think that's a big deal where that's concerned. Set your mirrors correctly, you shouldn't have any trouble. You can still look over your shoulder into your blind spot, not a big deal. It would be nice to see that as a standard feature, such as is the case with Honda Sensing, but that's not the case here. And I don't feel cramped in the interior. While this is obviously not a super large interior, I still feel very comfortable right here. I feel like I have plenty of room if I need to make any adjustments. So that's a good thing. In fact, I'd be curious to know for those of you who are over six feet tall, how do you fit in the CRV? All right, tell me what you think about the 2025 Honda CRV LX. Does the base trim level have enough features? I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends at Holmes Honda for loaning me this CRV for the day and a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, 
check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.